Welcome back. We are here with round two of the Florida VGC Regional Championships. We have Ashton Cox versus Justin Stipe here on stream. Uh, Link Yoshi Mario versus Panko VGC. I hear this is going to be a pretty hype match. Yeah, I mean, uh, Ashton's running something we just don't see in Pikachu. Uh, and Justin's running, as we see on the top screen, Xerneas, Groudon, Kangaskhan, Cresselia, Thunderous, and Crobat, while Ashton's bringing... Pikachu, Kangaskhan, Xerneas, Groudon, Gengar, and Amoongus. What's up with that Pikachu? I mean, I know it's everybody's favorite mascot, but can it be competitively viable in this format? I think this is the match to see. I mean, if if you're going to bring it, now could be a good time. There's a Crobat to sort of pick on. Um, you know, Thunderous takes decent damage from it, and it can't be paralyzed. So I think we, we definitely could see Pikachu. Um... Justin looks like he's running a fairly standard team. Um, you know, Mega Kangaskhan, the big six. He is running Thunderous and Cresselia, which you don't usually see, but I feel like these are all six very common, very strong Pokemon. Yeah, it, it's been proven that these guys work together. And he's sort of following a, almost a format, you know, his two restricted, his Mega, and then stuff to support. You know, the damage output only comes from the Mega and the restricted, while the assistance comes from everything else. Do you think Justin has any tricks up his sleeve? I don't know. I mean, he's a local player. You know, he's played in a number of PCs. It wouldn't shock me for him to do something a little different uh, just to see what happens. Um, but, you know, we'll have to wait and see. And Ashton's probably got tricks as well. So hopefully we're going to look for something a little different this game. Yeah, he's definitely running something different from the PC the other day. Anyways, the game is starting. We have Gengar and Kangaskhan coming out on, uh, I believe, Ashton's side of the field versus uh, Justin's Crobat and Cresselia. So one somewhat offensive lead, one somewhat defensive lead. Yeah, Ashton's in this uh, interesting position as well as both of these Pokemon are capable of Mega Evolving. Um, I'm sure only one of them is designed to. Um, most commonly, you don't bring Kangaskhan without Mega Evolving it. But then, that gives Justin good information on what Crobat's got. You know, most likely a Focus Sash, if it's not going to be Mega Evolving. Or he's just bluffing. It has that Mega Stone, he's just not going to use it. Yeah, I think I've personally seen a lot of people run Kangaskhan Gengar, where the Gengar is Focus Sash, like you said. But you never know, it could Mega Evolve and surprise us all. Um, I think I'm more curious about what that Cresselia is going to do. Uh, you know, if uh, Gengar is here for support, you know, and Cresselia is here for support, we might see a situation where they both try to set up Trick Room. Maybe they both try and do something like Icy Wind. It's really hard to say. Um, we are going to see Kangaskhan Mega evolve, so Gengar is not the Mega on this team. Cresselia goes straight for the Helping Hand into Crobat, which I don't think I've ever seen. I mean, it looks like Crobat's going to be going for damage, which is not a common thing on the Crobat. You'd, I mean, we were talking about this yesterday. Most Crobat run Crobat Super Fang. Crobat Brave Bird. Helping Hand Brave Bird from that Crobat does... Enough to knock to off the that. Oh my god. The critical hit takes it. I don't know if the critical hit mattered. It does a lot of damage. That to was itself. a ton of damage. A Gengar gets the trick room up for free, but that was pretty insane. Yeah, it's safe to say that on that turn, uh, I'm, I think Ashton got more than he bargained for. I he think was so not too. Expecting uh, a big helping hand Brave Bird to be coming out. I don't think anybody Gengar. ever no expects that. <laughs> So I think Ash is in this position now. He's got to figure out what on Earth this Crobat is up to. I don't know. Maybe that Groudon will help out. Speaking of Earth, yeah. Precipice Blades, Gravity could be really helpful here. You know, stopping Crobat from flying around and killing everything with Ash Bird. He did put the Trick Room up. <laughs> he did. So where Crobat is naturally exceptionally speedy is now, you know, not such a threat. But taking out his Mega Pokemon for very little on his side is a great trade for Justin. Yeah, I mean, there wouldn't have been any damage on Crobat that turn if it wasn't for the Brave Bird recoil. And I don't think we saw Life Orb either, so who knows what this Crobat's doing. Yeah, I think now is a good time for uh, Ashton to try and figure that out before he leaves Crobat, and it does even more damage. So it looks like Cresselia goes for Ice Beam onto Gengar, probably uh, predicting that Focus Sash and breaking it. Unfortunately, Groudon gets the eruption off and will knock out that Crobat. Uh, Shadow Ball will knock out that Cresselia, so I guess we'll never really know what that Crobat yeah, did. Cro but <laughs> Crobat doesn't get a second turn to show off what it can do, but uh, it certainly did some damage while it was out. It definitely did its part. <laughs> And we're going to see Justin send in his own Kangaskhan alongside his Groudon as his final two Pokemon. Yeah, I mean, 
I feel like with Justin's team, he's going to have more speed investment. He's going to train things to be a little quicker uh, rather than Ashton, who with the luxury of Trick Room can put more time training his Pokemon in the defensive stats. Um, so, you know, it's not a great position for Justin to be in. Uh, but he's definitely still got the damage there. Most certainly, you know, he has some priority from the Kangaskhan, which can apply some pressure. Um, breaking the Focus Ash, you know, just puts good damage on as well. Yeah, he really just needs to land a attack on Gengar this turn to uh, knock it out. Unfortunately, unless that Kangaskhan is scrappy, it probably is going to have to be from that Groudon, which, I mean, if he's running something... Uh, not defensive, uh, Ashton's Groudon could easily underspeed it and easily pick up that KO, so yeah, it's not really looking that good for Justin. No, turn 1 was pretty exciting, you know, we got to see a huge attack from Crobat, but alongside all that, Ashton got to trigger him up for free, which is sort of a trade you don't want to take. It looks like Ashton switches in Amoongus for that Gengar. Uh, Amoongus takes a fake out, so that Kangaskhan is definitely scrappy. I'm assuming he wanted to keep that Gengar alive to keep Trick Room around. Yeah. I think um, but what's really interesting is that Justin's Groudon sets up Sword Stance and just does not take any damage from that eruption. Um, I believe there's still a couple turns left of Trick Room, so if Justin can stall it out, then he might be able to swing things in his favor. Yeah, it's going to be a long stall, though. You're going to be pressing Protect a lot and really hoping for the best. I think the... he needs a double Protect at this point to clinch it. I think it was a little audacious of him to try and set up Sword Stance when he was already on the back foot. Then to try and push himself into a lead was definitely cheeky, to say the least. But... Um... No, I think Ashton's in a very strong position. Having Amoongus under Trick Room is so oppressive with the threat of Spore. Yeah, we'll have to see what that Groudon does this turn. Um, I think if I were in Justin's shoes, I would just press the Protect button and just hope that I get the 30% chance the next turn to stall the rest of Trick Room. Yeah, but it's, it's interesting to know as well because he counted the turns properly. Yeah. Um, you know, lots of players sort of slip down on those counts. Yeah, it looks like uh, Ashton switches out his own uh, Groudon. Uh, Justin's Groudon protects, does not get put to sleep by the Spore. Um, I think that switch there was to set Gengar up so it can set up Trick Room again. Yeah, I think as soon as the uh, Trick Room runs out, Gengar's just going to pop it right back down. Uh, and then you end up in an awkward position as if you're not using a fire move. You it's really hard for Justin now. He does get the he double protect. He does get the though, double protect. Fishing for it and finding it. So Groudon is going to have one turn here to press the Precipice Blades button, most likely, because he did Sword Stance. It could be Earthquake. Um, and just hope that he knocks out that Gengar. And, I mean, unfortunately, I don't think a Precipice Blades, even at plus two, can k knock out that Amoongus, but... I think it's now is a good time to find out. Now is a great uh, time to find out. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, because he's... He's probably not running the eruption, and even though he's a half elf, it's not going to be a good time. So it's Precipice Blades time. Gengar doesn't go for Trick Room, though, and throws a Shadow Ball straight at Groudon. And Groudon goes for Fire Punch, connecting with the Amoongus. Uh, so a good play, maybe assuming that Gengar wouldn't have attacked there, but unfortunately for Justin, um, Gengar is faster. All it needs to do is attack next turn, and he has this one. Yeah, that's... This is a really good play from Ashton. He doesn't waste time trying to set up Trick Room. Um, no, I think I think Justin had to look for the Precipice Blade. It's like he had to take both out that yeah. turn. And hope that he outsped the other ground on this turn. Yeah. Uh, well played from both sides, though. That Crobat was just something you don't see usually, yeah, that, that <laughs> which is a lot of fun. will be a mystery for the rest of the day. Unless Justin makes top cut, we probably <laughs> won't see it again. Um, we, nev we never know. Never know. Pikachu still remains a mystery yeah. as well. Lots of things hidden in both these teams. Uh, Ashton's clearly changed it up from yesterday. Yeah. So, you know, he's looking for something a bit different, and it's clearly working. He's now 2-0 and o going into round 3. It's clearly working. Uh, still relying on Trick Room, though, so you have to wonder if that's his favorite thing for uh, 2016 or yeah, if something else. He knows. It's the same sort of familiarity thing. If you know how to play it, no matter what format, Trick Room will work for you. Yeah. All right. Well, that was round two. We'll be back in a few minutes with round pl uh, three. Please stand by and let us know in the comments if there's any technical problems. A slide in 